Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome to episode 17 of our Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. In our previous episode, we finished our Enscape scene. We added some more details, uh, we added some landscape and so on and so forth. Today what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna jump into creating presentation boards. Um, the reason I kind of put it in quotes is we don't really print them all that much anymore, but uh, the same idea applies, which is taking our Revit views, like our floor plans, our elevations, and so on, making them nice and pretty and presentable, and then placing them on a singular sheet, uh, digital or not, um, to present to the client. This is actually the second to last episode. In our next episode, we are going to present this design to the client. Um, so this is kind of the penultimate episode. And before we jump into the Revit views, I did wanna quickly show you what the Enscape um, scene looks like right now and what I'm going to present to the clients. So I'm planning on sending these PDF boards or board um, along with um, presenting a live model in Enscape and then also um, sending them a link to a panoramic tour of Enscape. So I'm gonna jump in real quick to Enscape and actually show you what the current Enscape scene looks like before I present it to the clients. So as I jump into Enscape, what you'll see is I have save views, um, three save views, each of them with design option one and design option two. If you remember, one is this sink in the north wall, the other one is a sink in the island. You'll notice Enscape transitions between views really nicely. Um, so it has this nice transition. Um, and so here's view number two uh, showing the two options. And then finally, view number three showing the two options. So this is my Enscape scene um, that I'm going to use to present to the clients. But I am also going to send them a PDF board um, that's going to have uh, interior elevations with floor plans of the two design options. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to show you how to set up some really sexy looking Revit views, how to export them, and then how to tie them together. So stick around for that. Uh, before we jump in, I did want to take a moment to thank our sponsor of this series, which is RevitFamily.biz. I don't think I need to talk about it too much more if you watch the previous 16 episodes, but RevitFamily.biz is a website where you can download bundled packages of amazing residential Revit families. And for those of you who learn about it here, you can use 2022 Revit Kid, the promo code um, over at RevitFamily.biz. Click in the link up here or the link below, and you can save 20% off any bundle or package. Let's check out the video and then we'll jump right into Revit. So here we are in our Revit model. Um, you can see I've got some interior elevations set up. Um, I'm actually flipping them over to realistic. I usually don't use realistic. I, I usually use um, hidden line or shaded, but in this case, um, I have some pretty nice materials and I like the look and the feel of the realistic, especially with the wood grain. So I do end up going with realistic. Um, I am using my 70, 50, 20 rule. For those of you not familiar with that, I'll make sure to link it uh, below. You can see it here, actually, if I jump into graphics uh, settings, you'll see the sun, the ambient light, and the shadows are 70, uh, 50, 20, or I think I went down to 15 here. I have ambient light on and shadows on. That's essentially it. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to make a view filter from this specific elevation view, and then I'm gonna apply it to the rest of my elevations. So you can see here, I'm actually clicking through these elevations. I made these elevations really fast, and so just a nice, another nice little tip for you guys is, um, you can select the elevations in your floor plan view and rename them <laughs> uh, while you're in floor plan view. Sometimes it's easier. Like for example, here I'm, I'm tabbing and selecting and saying, you know, interior elevation south, interior elevation north, uh, interior elevation island or island elevation south. And so it's just a way when, you, when you're placing a whole bunch of views that may be called elevation 1A, 2A, 3A, CB, et cetera. Um, it's a quick way to sort of rename them without having to go back and forth between what it is. What I'm doing here is actually you'll notice the island view because of the of my design option, um, the sun or the light uh, was on the wrong side. So what I'm doing is I'm actually pulling the lighting out of my view template um, for these specific views. That way I can adjust the sunlight direction um, or interior lighting or just general scene lighting um, per view. Um, so what you'll see as I go through this is I actually start pulling a couple things out of the view filter and that's okay to do. Um, the view filter doesn't necessarily have to have everything. Um, yes, I could have made a view filter that said, you know, island north versus island south. I guess, depending on how you want to look at it, then that could be a way to do it too. Um, but with, with this, I just pulled off the lighting um, from the view filter. And so here's kind of what the interior elevation looks like um, as, it, as it stands. Um, uh, you can see here's the north elevation, here's the south elevation, um, and then um, the elevations of the islands. 
So now once I have those set and happy, um, I'm going to duplicate those elevations, rename them option B. So I'm just duplicating each one, renaming it option B. And then I'm going to assign the second elevation, the design option B. So elevation A, I could actually um, assign it design option A. Uh, because there's only two options, it's, it's the primary, so I don't necessarily need to assign it. What I'm doing here is I'm just assigning uh, design option B to these three views. Um, and I'm going to uh, either uncheck the design option here or I'm going to uh, create a, uh, a separate uh, view filter, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm duplicating that view filter and I'm making a view filter specifically for des design option B. Um, so with this, I can actually, if I create a new views, I can just assign it A or B uh, using the view filter. You can see here, I'm just going in and I'm assigning it design option B, which is sync at the north wall. And there we have it, now it's changed. And in these three views, it's already been changed. So now I've got my three elevation views, six in total, because of the two different options. I have a, a two 3D views. I don't think I use the axons in this one. Um, and then you can see I have an option A and an option B of my floor plan. Same settings on the floor plan, I just did not use realistic for the floor plan. So for those that don't know, in order to export images from Revit, please don't snip your screen to create images. Go to File, Export, and then way out the bottom, Images and, and um, Image. A uh, pro tip here is go to keyboard shortcuts, which is KS on your keyboard or under manage or view. Um, and you can assign the image export a keyboard shortcut um, just because going to the file menu takes forever. So I suggest doing it. I didn't do it in this video because I wanted to show you guys, but I definitely suggest doing it. I actually use um, EI as my export image. So I'm going through here is I'm actually just selecting my 3D views, my elevation views and my plan views that I'm going to export. So they're all set up. They look pretty. They're good to go. I'm going to set my um, image size to usually I go between 5,000 and 6,000. Anyone who wants to get into the, the geekiness of image size and DPI, feel free. For right now, for what I'm doing, um, five to 6,000 pixels is good. Um, JPEG lossless is good. Keep it smaller. If you want to do PNG, you can do PNG. And there we go. We have our images exported. So you can see I have an axon. I have elevations of option A and option B. Here's option A and option B. Uh, you'll notice because I duplicated those views and I didn't modify them, they are the exact same image, which is very nice for the overlaying and sort of, you know, being able to uh, overlay them in Photoshop. And you can see here's option A and option B. So I've got my images good to go. So <clears throat> I'm going to do one more step, and this is more of a stylized and a specific thing that I like, um, which is a program called Photo Sketcher. I don't always do this, but I do it a lot on these Revit um, shaded views and realistic views because I just really like the way it looks, especially in this early stage. So what Photo Sketcher does, which is F-O-T-O -O Sketcher, I'll put a link below. It's a free free program. It has a bunch of really cool um, sketching um, presets. Um, I use watercolor, or sorry, Painting 5, which is a watercolor. And what that does is it, is it makes your image look a little sketchy. It makes it look um, a little less refined. It adds a little texture to the image, um, while at the same time, you know it's still a digital image. So it's, it's a pretty cool looking effect. So here's kind of my, my settings for Painting 5. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating a preset um, of, of uh, the painting or the drawing parameters for this one. Um, I'm saving them uh, if I like them, and then I'm going to do a batch um, a batch process of all the images. So I just save those presets. They're, they're good looking. I like the way it looks. If you look at the shadow and the shading, um, it really shows in those realistic views. But if you look at it right now, you can see the shadow kind of has this watercolor effect to it. Just adds, adds a little bit of depth and interest to me. Um, so now I'm going to go over, I'm going to do a batch process. I'm going to select all of my images. I'm going to apply the same settings to them and I'm going to run it. So now that it's done, uh, on the left hand side was my image from Revit. On the right hand side is my photo sketched image. You can see what it did is it kept all the details, but it added this sort of watercolor effect. And you could add or, or subtract it depending on your stylistic taste, but I like the way it looks. I think it adds a little something special. And you'll see when the boards are done, um, how nice this, this effect kind of looks in softening the images. So here I'm in Photoshop now. Um, again, this could be Illustrator, it could be um, InDesign, it could be GIMP, I don't really care. Um, it's just a program where you can bring in images, adjust them and add text and so on. Um, I just prefer Photoshop. So I'm just dragging them all in. Uh, a key here is dragging all the images in, pressing enter, 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 so they place in, so that they all come in at the same size, uh, at least the ones that you want to be the same. So now when you're scaling the images, like I did here, I can select two images, scale them down, and then split them apart, and they're the same size. This would be different depending on what other program you use, but in Photoshop, this is the way that I would do it so that both images kind of stay the same size. And you can see here, I'm just kind of take these images and I'm gonna make my make my board. I'm gonna adjust uh, the sizes, I'm gonna adjust the location of them, 
and I'm going to put the floor plan and then the elevations um, on below it. Here I'm using some guidelines to, to line up, uh, potentially <laughs> line up the, the um, actual elevations um, with the floor plan. Always, always a nice touch there. You can see me just organizing these layers. Again, trying to take uh, some guidelines and, and organize uh, the, the ends with the floor plan. So ideally, yes, it's not perfectly to scale, but at least there's sort of an idea of scale um, as, you, as you're looking at these things. As you can see, even though it's to scale, I ended up kind of centering the, the elevations because trying to align it with the floor plan would have looked pretty gross as far as the layout's concerned. So now you can see what I did here is I have option A with the floor plan interior elevation and the interior elevation of the island. I actually ditched the interior elevation of the other side of the island because it really wasn't that important as far as my, my getting my idea across. Here I'm just kind of deleting some excess and cropping the images um, and then and then just uh, using using an alpha max mask to uh, to crop the images, slide them up and then I can put my titles and my my uh, my logo on them and so quickly just throw in some text. Option A. T is text on Photoshop if you guys really want keyboard shortcuts, <laughs> um, assigning that uh, that text a uh, color, um, adding a little style to it, some color, some uh, some branded color to it, and then tossing in um, a logo. Now I'm just kind of aligning the the headers uh, and the logo so they look nice. Range at the island, sink at the island. Um, I've got some floor plan elevation. You can see I actually I actually flipped the uh, the floor plan. Um, for some reason, I just didn't like I didn't like the fact that the the north wall was down. Uh, the way you're looking at the elevation, it just made more sense to me. I like the way it looked uh, flipped. From here, I'm just gonna save it as a PDF, or if you want, you can print it as a PDF. Here, I'm gonna use my Bluebeam PDF printer. I'm gonna fit it uh, to the page size that I would like, that I set up, which is probably 11 by 17. High resolution print to PDF, and then you've got a nice PDF right here um, to, to the size that you need, and this is something you can send or print and, and hand over to the client. So just like that, you can take your Revit images and views, um, tie them together, um, add a little flair to them. If you wanna use the photo sketcher, use the 70, 50, 20 rule, and you got yourself a presentation board. So there you have it. We have a presentation board now. What do we have? We have our Enscape scene, a live scene ready to go. We have our presentation board that we can share with the client. And then we also have that same Enscape scene. I also exported and published those panoramas to the cloud um, and then um, created a virtual tour in the Enscape cloud viewer. Um, so I'm going to use live Enscape during the presentation uh, in the next episode. But uh, I did send after the fact a link for them to access the Enscape um, live tour. So they have the ability to, to walk through their model exactly like they did in our presentation. So we're here. Uh, next episode is the client meeting. We've got everything we need. We've got it scheduled. And uh, you guys are going to peek in as I present this design that I've showed you guys how I made over the last uh, 17 episodes to our clients. So hopefully um, you're ex as excited as I am uh, to check that out. And so I'll see you on that next episode. If you're enjoying this series, definitely subscribe to this channel. Um, comment below. Give me a nice little thumbs up. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I can't wait.